So the thermal performance on our ROG G-Series Strix has been great. This is the G531GU. Link in the description below for the review. We're talking 74 degrees Celsius on the GPU maximum and in the 80s for the CPU. Sometimes low 80s, sometimes high 80s, but it's been fantastic. We've got the i5 9300H and a GTX 1660 Ti. Excellent thermal performance, excellent acoustics. Check the review. This is a pretty darn good laptop. The reason for the teardown, as it wasn't necessary today, and it did not change thermal performance whatsoever, was that 12 months down the road, after owning one of these things, that thermal paste is going to be dried up and you're probably going to want to replace it. Should you buy one of these new 12 months down the road, there's a good chance that, that laptop sat in a warehouse somewhere for 12 months, and as a matter of fact, that thermal paste probably isn't going to be too good at that point either, regardless of whether or not the machine had been running or not. On top of that, Instead of thermal pads, there is thermal paste all over the VRMs, chokes, and VRAM. I had a subscriber email me, and we had been talking back and forth, and he was very adamant on stating that the thermal paste does not need to be replaced. Of course, he's not referring to what's on the GPU or the CPU, but he's referring to all that heavy-duty toothpaste-looking gunk all over the VRMs, chokes, VRAM, and things like that. Now. To honor that individual through this long conversation, I said the next time I get a laptop that has nothing but thermal paste all over that, I will leave it be and I will run the heck out of this machine and see if we can get it to blow up. All right, so that's exactly what we did here today. I'm not recommending you to do that. I would suggest cleaning off that old thermal paste with isopropyl alcohol like we have done in the past on many teardowns putting a new thermal paste application, or if you're really savvy and you wanna go ahead and put thermal pads on there, go ahead, but paste, generally speaking, does work very well. I ran this machine 16 hours on load and then gamed on it for 90 minutes. Seems to be working okay so far. This method, I can't honestly look you in the eye and say, yeah, go for it, green light, but nothing bad has happened either. Unfortunately, you can't really monitor the temps of the VRMs and chokes and VRAM and things like that like you can on some fancy desktop GPUs. So unfortunately, there's no way for me to confirm or deny the success or failure of what we've done here today. But again, to honor that individual, I thought we would just go ahead and let that paste be as it is. And rather than hiding it from you guys and having some secret video, we'll just roll it into this one. So with that said, enjoy the teardown and have a good day. Removing the bottom plastic panel on our G531GU is easy. There is two different length screws, so be mindful of where these have come from. The bottom left and bottom right screw will stay attached to the bottom panel. There will be two ribbon cables that will be attached to the bottom panel LED section and to the motherboard, so flip this over carefully and leave it be just like so. You want to plug your battery, slide the metal latch towards the cooler, and then you will be able to pry the plastic battery plug away from the motherboard. After removing our single tamper evident sticker on the top left hand corner, I'm going to proceed with removing the eight screws that hold on to the heatsink and the three screws that hold on to the left fan as that will come with the heatsink. The right fan can stay put. There is a little bit of aluminum tape here that I carefully peeled away with my fingers as it was holding the heatsink in place. Just a little heads up. All we have to do now is unplug that single fan and remove the cooler. There is all that glorious thermal paste instead of thermal pads that we will not be removing over the VRM's chokes and VRAM. Of course, we will be removing that off of the GPU and CPU section. If you missed that part in the beginning of the video, shame on you. Out with the old and in with the new. Isopropyl alcohol is your best friend here, as well as paper towels, microfiber cloths, and coffee filters, whatever it takes to get a squeaky clean, residue-free dye surface area. You may also want to take some plastic scraper tools around the outside of the die, but do not touch the die. We do not need to scratch that up. For today's repaste, we're going to use some of the Cooler Master Master Gel. I recommend this Cryonaut Icy Diamond. The reason why we are not using liquid metal today is I cannot max out the fans on this particular laptop. 
Oftentimes, when you cannot do this, liquid metal has very little impact on thermal performance as temperatures just tend to scale the fans until it satisfies the temperatures that were set from the factory. Quite unfortunate, I've quite been the advocate of having a maximum fan button on all chassis, but unfortunately, our uh, G-Series G531GU does not have one. After setting the cooler straight down, just work all the screws back into place. You should go around two or three times before everything is nice and snug. Plug in your fan, make sure your battery's plugged back in, thumbs up, and you are rocking and rolling. Congratulations, you just learned how to repaste your ROG G-Series G531GU. Thanks for watching.